How are y'all doing today? Good. Did everyone have a good weekend? Yeah? No? Yes? Yeah, well, I did, so that's all that matters. Okay. Um, so, welcome to basically the last time we're going to all be together as a big lecture. Yes! I don't know if you guys are excited, but, yep. All right. So, for today, we have the biggest kind of treat for all of you today to kind of enjoy. We have a special guest. Um, and like a reminder, make sure that you guys are very polite with cell phones and all that stuff. And please do not leave any time be before you're dismissed. Uh, we do have the president of our very own campus, President Ruben Armiana. So if you can give him a warm welcome and please. Thank you very much. I wasn't expecting such a large class, my God. This makes for not going to church yesterday. Um, I was asked to talk a little bit about leadership. And um, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit and probably leave a little bit of time for you to ask questions and hopefully we might have some answers. Uh, leadership is a team sport and a contact sport. You don't do leadership by yourself. You do it always with other people. And that relationship of doing it with others is essential. Imagine if you were in a deserted island with a big palm tree, sharks going around the island, and you are the greatest leader God ever made, but there's nobody there but the palm tree. Doesn't do you much good. It's not, you know, therefore, it requires people uh, to uh, exercise uh, the skills of leadership, therefore. And you do it in a constant, constant set of relationships uh, with other uh, individuals. And the only way to do that is to bring others alongside uh, with you. Uh, sometimes people ask me, tell me, oh, you know, you're a president of a university, you have a big job, you know, it must be very difficult and complex, uh, etc. cetera. Universities like running a small city, except that it's full of pretty bright people. And uh, I tell, no, I have the easiest job at the university. And they look at me, what is he talking about? Because everybody tells me what to do. <laughs> you know. Therefore, in that sense, I get lots of advice about what to do. The genius of it, the uh, difficult part is to figure out what to do among all of that uh, good advice uh, that you get. Now, <clears throat> as you look into your own leadership capabilities, your own leadership potential, and to be honest, this is what a university, especially a university rooted in the liberal arts, uh, hopes to do is to prepare leaders is to give you the tools to have, for you to exercise your leadership uh, abilities in whatever field you want to do that. Be it in business, be it in teaching, be it in medicine, uh, working in the community. This is what a liberal arts uh, education does, is the preparation of leaders. Now, in the United States, less than a, about a third of the population gets a college degree. Therefore, by the very definition of you are on that one third, the rest is in the other two thirds, that in itself distinguishes you and makes you a potential uh, leader. 
And again, I think the liberal arts education <laughs> prepares you very, very for that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But before you, we get into this thing about what leadership and how you go about it, et cetera, I think there are some basic ingredients uh, that you need to consider. Um, one is your character. And these are questions that don't come in a test. These are questions that you cannot cheat of somebody else. So if you do, you fail. But these are questions about what are the pillars of your personality? What, what, what makes you who you are and what you are? Uh, 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 how, how do you know what's right from wrong? And we all have that compass inside of us that tell us what is right from what is wrong. Now, we many times, you know, choose to ignore it. And there are consequences for that. But deep down, you think yourself and eh, you know it. For what are those characteristics in your personality that uh, tells you what's right uh, from wrong. Uh, also that what, what your character is, what, what makes you, also helps you link knowledge to action. You know, you can have a lot of knowledge, uh, but if you don't do something with that knowledge, it's really a wasted. Uh, talent. And it is the character who says, yeah, I am going to be willing to take this action because it's the right thing to do. Versus, no, I'm not going to do that because it's the wrong thing to do. I mean, that, that character is what links that uh, to each other. Yeah, there is a yeah, I went to the store and somebody dropped a hundred dollar bill on the floor and I can pick it up and nobody knows, but I know who did it and probably that person needs it more than I do. That's what tells you, hey, should I pick it up or should I sell to the person who dropped it? Hey, ma'am, sir, you dropped this. Uh, that's the link to the action. And again, uh, how, how we manage it is very important. It also, character is what gives you the courage to act when it's not convenient to act. So many times we are uh, facing with, if I do that, I'm not going to be the most liked person in the room today. But it's the right thing to do. Uh, when you vote, you know, uh, I, I have a terrific, terrific um, record of voting the wrong way. As a matter of fact, if you are a candidate and you said, you know, uh, are you going to support me? If I said yes, you know you're going to lose. Uh, your vote, but you feel that it's the right thing to do. You know, I mean, like I, you feel that it is the appropriate thing to do, but it is how do you act when the consequences are not necessarily one of being the most likely. Therefore, character is that thing that is, you know, known, known, known thyself. Now, character is based upon uh, two principles, the principles of your values, those things that were, uh, and, and the principle of ethics. Uh, values are things that really are taught to you yeah, by your, mostly by your family or by those of us who uh, uh, pursued a religious background uh, by the values of, of, that, um, of that religion, 
uh, of the values of this community we live in. For, you know, those values and how you put in place those values is your ethics. Uh, again, the, the right and the wrong. Therefore, the pillars of leadership, sort of the foundations of leadership, are based upon character, are based upon values, and they are based upon ethics. And if you play loosey-goosey with any one of those, uh, you're going to have troubles uh, in, in leadership. And, and you, we see that as we pick up the newspapers every day and we saw flawed leaders. Uh, and it's because somehow along the line, they have not been true to their values or, or their e ethics. Therefore, uh, your values, your ethics, uh, your character have to be solid. If not, your success will be temporary. You will, you will fail. A very important part of leadership is vision. And what is, when, and, and, and I'm going to talk about a little about vision. Vision is sort of an idealized but practical view of what you want to achieve. What you want, if you are leading an institution, what do you want that institution to be? Uh, if you want to work in a community, what do you see that community being? It has, it's, it's, it's an idealistic uh, perspective, but it has to be practical. It has to be doable. I can have all the vision I want of being an NBA star, and then I look at myself in the mirror at 5'5", five, 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 I ain't going to be a, it's not practical for me to become a basketball star. I just don't have, you know, God didn't give me neither the, well, didn't give me the talent, but on top of that, didn't give me the, the uh, legs or the uh, stretch of the arms for me to have become a basketball star. For I could have all the idealized vision of myself, uh, but if I, it has to be practical. It has to base upon reality. Uh, and that vision, you know, uh, doesn't have to have a lot of detail in it, but it has to have this broad aspect. And it's something you should feel. You should be a mash between your brain and your gut. Believe me, your gut tells you so much more sometimes than your brain does. I know that at the university, we all deal mostly with the brain. But when you are dealing about realizing a vision, you have to feel it. Feel it that it's right, that it's proper, that it's achievable, that it's doable. And it has to be that combination of intellectual, the brain, but that feeling you get that is the thing to do, and you get that in your gut. And as, as many of us experience and will always experience, sometimes when we don't pay, take a, attention to that internal gut feeling about something, despite what the brain says, uh, we fail. Therefore, uh, it's, it has to, should be that combination. Now, <clears throat> you need to express that vision uh, often to the point where you believe it yourself. If you said something long enough, you know, believe me, and, and, and if it is concise, and if you do it with passion and energy, not only do you believe it, but it becomes contagious. Others will believe it and, uh, and see it. Uh, and I think that's 
quite important in, in, in how uh, this works. For instance, people ask me, what's my vision of Sonoma State University? And believe it or not, it has been a fairly consistent vision for the years I have been here. Uh, I view it as a relatively small, and relatively small have differences, but, but not a huge, a relatively small university based upon the liberal arts, which would be the uh, university of choice for undergraduate education with some strong programs in, in uh, professional programs. For, uh, that's the vision. You know, for others it would be to be a major research institution which will, you know, deal with the issues of uh, research in medicine. We don't have a medical school. For that's not the vision. For again, and that vision is it's what makes you uh, make it possible for others to say, hey, that makes sense. That makes it possible uh, uh, to, be, uh, to be done. Now, <clears throat> as you develop this vision, there are some things that go uh, a part of it. One, I think your formal education is a very important part of what you are able to envision and where you are able to uh, see how you play a role in that, uh, in that vision. Um, uh, it is through your formal education uh, that you are allowed to be in the game. Uh, we are living a society of credentials where in order to play games of leadership, you have to have a credential, i.e. a degree. That opens the door. That say, hey, you can play this game. For this is, and in my not necessarily says that you have to have a degree in psychology or a degree in mathematics, etc. But in our society, having that credential, in Latin that bona fides, it's an important part of allowing you to enter the game of, of leadership. Second is the ability to assume personal responsibility. Uh, take responsibility for everything that happens to you or does not happen to you. If it exists in my life, I am allowed it to exist. If there are changes to be made, uh, I am responsible to make those changes. Uh, I need to be able to identify what needs to be changed and I need to do whatever is necessary to make it uh, possible. Uh, don't, don't feel you are a victim of anybody or anything. If you are, uh, doesn't mean that because you might have been born uh, in a non-wealthy uh, background, you know, your parents were not college educated, uh, you have had lots of uh, challenges to overcome, uh, don't feel that you are a victim. Feel that this is what I bring to the table. These are experiences that are important to who I am, to my values, to my character, and make the best out of that uh, uh, foundation. And, and that, in a sense, means that people need to recognize that you have integrity, uh, so you stand by your values, uh, so 
you say, you say what you believe and that you are dependable. Uh, that's part of leadership, uh, to have integrity. Uh, I am what I am who I am. These are my values. These are my, these are my ideas. And you can depend on me. I'm not going to tell you X and do Y. Uh, one of the important things in leadership is the ability to, for others to guess where you are going. Uh, that because of who you are and what you are, you are not surprising everybody every day about everything. That you are I know, where he, I know where he or she is going. I know that if he says or she says, I'm going to do th this, it's going to get done. I know that this person, if I, he agrees to something, there is follow-up. That's absolutely, that dependable gene is essential to be, be able to be a, a leader. You people have to trust what you do and what you say and uh, and in a sense don't guess about what you're going to do know who because of what you have done if you said it he's going to do it she's going to do it and that's i think that's uh important now <coughs> uh, a couple of other comments about things that you sort of part of, of what, once you have this vision, one of the kinds of things that needs to be part of that. Uh, be focused. Be, you know, uh, be open to also some new ideas. Be open to differences of ideas. Be open, be open to uh, changes, but be focused. This is what I want to accomplish, and I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to be dependable in people knowing that I'm going to pursue that uh, vision, that idea. And uh, don't, the easiest thing in the world is to be allowed to be distracted. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm so capable of be distracted. When I was a student, uh, just before I had to study for my final exam and do the paper, it was time to clean my apartment. <laughs> the damn thing had not been cleaned for five weeks. Why had to be done just before at that time? Uh, you know, it was my way to allow for distractions. And, I know that every one of us have that, but you need to know what distracts you and resist uh, that temptation. Uh, you have to be consistent. Uh, consistency, is, as I said before, people need to expect, people, you shouldn't, people shouldn't guess about you. People should know that so you are consistent, so you have discipline of thought and action. Uh, you have to be willing to the consequences of reward and punish. That's one of the toughest things in, in leadership positions. Not just rewarding, but also punishing. People ought to know that if they do wrong, if they don't follow up what they agreed to to do, etc. So they will have consequences, and you are going to be there. You're not going to be there for that. Does that means that you're not going to be universally loved? And that's tough, but you're going to be consistent. And you're going to be fair about it, but you're also willing to reward those who do well and punish those who don't do what they agree 
uh, to do. And so you're on top of it. Uh, and so you're honest, and you're fair, and you're honest. Not necessarily you're the most loved person in the world. You're not, and believe me, nobody is universally liked. It's just a human impossibility. You know, we, there will always will be critics. There will always be people who, for whatever reason, think you are doing it wrong. And you need to live feeling comfortable enough with yourself to know that being universally liked is not going to happen. There are days in which my two dogs might not even like me as much as they should. And, you know, and the best, the best uh, recommendation I have for any leader is get a dog. They are, they really like you for what you are and who you are. They don't question too much as long as you feed them occasionally and let them out, uh, you know. But even then, some days they, you know, I do things that they might not like. Therefore, I, I do that. As you are tactical, and part of, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, don't piss off all this, too many constituencies at the same time. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, there are groups that are, you can, nothing you're going to do is going to have, like I said, unanimous decisions and the unanimous liking, but just don't do it in such a way that you're pissing off everybody at the same time. It doesn't work that way. You get too much uh, opposition if you do that. And be willing to say, you know, be, by standing by your belief, by standing by, what, by your vision, you also be willing to say, you know, if I need to pull, pull out, it's, I'll pull out. That's the price I pay to stand by my convictions. The price is that, uh, you know, you move on and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and be a, I'm, I'm feeling good about that. Uh, you also need to be optimist and show that because you believe in that vision, you like the people who work with you, so you're an optimist. Uh, pessimists don't become good leaders because you're really dealing with this thing called vision, which is a little fussy, and, 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 and it doesn't exist today. Therefore, there's a lot of chances for people to uh, put holes in it. Therefore, you have to be an optimist at what you are doing, what your institution is doing, with the people you are doing, it's going to work. And that it is a happy thing to, for it to work. Leaders sh should be happy in that sense. Therefore, you know, if you are somebody who always sees the, ha the glass half empty, uh, you will pay dearly as, as, a, as a leader. Leaders will see the glass uh, half full. As a matter of fact, even if it's a quarter full, they see the, the glass half full. And, 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 and you have to show others. Others have to feel that optimism in you. Optimism is a, is a contagious disease. You need to communicate. Communicate uh, and communicate some more. You never communicate enough. And believe me, just because you have said it a thousand times doesn't mean that it has been heard a thousand times. Therefore, this communication is, 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 is rather uh, important. Uh, and you need to bring others along with you. This is, uh, this is like I said, a, a team sport, a contact sport. Others have to believe 
in, in, in what you are thinking and they need to be feel part of it and they need to feel that they are a, a integral uh, to their success. Uh, in one of your chapters, they had a very good uh, definition of leadership uh, and I copied it. Uh, leadership is a relational, meaning relations between people and an ethical process of people working together, attempting to accomplish a positive change. Uh, that was a very, very good definition of leadership. Uh, relational, meaning it, it's with others. It has to be based upon ethics. It has to be the right thing to do. It means people working together. Leaders do not act alone. Attempting to accomplish a positive change rather than a, a negative change. Now, there are uh, skills uh, in, in some of these. Um, uh, some of those skills are interpersonal, how you deal with others. Uh, others are conceptual. You are able to think, to put different pieces of the puzzle together. They have to be tactical skills. Uh, you know, you don't get from A to D without stopping at B and C and how you move, when do you propose something, what, how much do you push, when do you step back. For, uh, you have to have sort of a long view rather than a short view. And, uh, and then you have to have some technical skills. If you're dealing with matters of money, you need to know how to add and subtract. Major difficulty at a university. A lot of people don't know how to act very well. Two and two become seven rather than four. Uh, and you need to have those kinds of, uh, of technical uh, skill. Now, I probably will spend a lot of time dealing with vision because I think that's really what promotes a, a leader. Uh, and the most, uh, Nelson Mandela uh, recently passed away, the great leader of South Africa said, everything is always impossible until somebody does it. I mean, who would have believed, you know, when he was in, in a jail in this island in South Africa, said South Africa, uh, would eliminate apartheid, he would become president, he be will become one of the greatest leaders in this world. Uh, and so there was a general good transfer of power uh, in South Africa with uh, very little violence and uh, it happened. And that was, therefore, uh, he believed it. And like I said, uh, everything is always impossible until somebody does it. And now we say, you know, you know uh, who would have believed in, in my time as, uh, you know, that all of you have in your hands as much uh, power in terms of your iPhones, etc., as you have. Uh, when I was sitting in a seat like yours, many years ago at the University of Texas in Austin, computers were these massive machines underneath a, a building where you fed uh, these cards with holes. I, I know there's one person back there who knows what I'm talking about. None of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, today, you have 10 times that computing power in your hand. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was done. Therefore, <clears throat> when you propose a vision, uh, it's a little bit of a crazy thing. Uh, you see it, but others done. Uh, and, and I think that's the most dangerous part of leadership for, for change. If it has not done before, and there's nothing specific and so others can see and touch it, 
Uh, it has not been created yet, therefore it's easy to dismiss, kill, ridicule, postpone, and deprioritize. Uh, there's a professor here, at, he just uh, retired, in fact, he had, they had a party for him Friday, who has been opposed about everything I have done. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure so if I ever, you know, got out of bed on the right side, so it was not the wrong thing to do. And this professor has written his, all his emails. He has something about, and this is because when I proposed the Green Music Center, etc., is some things that I said before. I said that uh, I thought, when I thought about it, when I conceived it, that it was a crazy idea. But it was a doable insanity. More things that are interesting to do are a little bit crazy. And they are a little bit insane, but they are doable. That's that connection between uh, vision and practicality. Uh, you know, and he was right. I said that. And, uh, and, uh, and I believe that. And, uh, uh, but once you have it, you walk backwards from that idea. You walk backwards about what, does, what do I have to do to make it happen? Well, sometimes it takes longer than you expect to happen. But it's so important to have that, that vision, that idea, and so to be doable, even though insane, a little bit insane. And then you walk backwards about, what do I have to do? <coughs> well, I have to have a piece of land that I don't have. I have to, you know, find a hundred million dollars that I don't have. A little bit insane. Uh, it happens to happen at the time when the economy went, you know, down to hell. Uh, creates issues, the first time. But you have to have that concept of a doable uh, insanity. Uh, and you have to be willing to get it done. You have to have action. Vision, vision without, this is a, vision without action is, is a fantasy. Action without vision is misleading and a waste of resources. But vision associated with action can modify the world. And I think that's sort of an a important part uh, of that. There was a guy, and I'm sure you have heard about him, uh, whose name was uh, Niccolo Machiavelli. And he wrote this little book called The Prince. One time, every, everybody in in, in some part of their life ought to, write, ought to read this little book called The Prince uh, because it talks about leadership it, it, and it's sort of unconventional. And uh, he wrote that change is a risky proposition. There's nothing more difficult to carry out, no more doubtful of success, no more dangerous to handle than to initiate a new order of things. For the reformer, i.e. the leader, has enemies in all who profit from the old order, and only lukewarm defenders in all of those who will profit by the new order. Therefore, that's sort of, uh, and that's the price you pay, is that uh, in initiating, envisioning some change. Now, Elegance is the enemy of action. Some of us are always looking for the most elegant, perfect time to get something done. And, you know, I want this to be so good. Well, uh, in many ways, change leading change is not the formulation of an elegant and cohesive plan. But to be honest, it's the implementation of initiative held together by this philosophical concept of moving forward, i.e. your vision. 
And that came from a great, that quote came from a, a great philosophical piece of literature called Making Soup, Stone Soup. I remember that as a children? There's a book called Making Stone Soup. They had a lot of it. Uh, and again, nothing is impossible for the person who doesn't have to do it. For don't let the elegance of per and perfection paralyze you from being a leader. You're never going to be perfect. It's never going to be the smoothest road in the world. Um, you are going to stumble here and there. You're going to get scraped here and there. But if you persist to it, and persistence is a strong part of it, is doable, and your leadership will be rewarded by seeing your vision uh, accomplished. Well, those are some of the thoughts I had about leadership and about uh, how to do that. Any questions? I either have dazzled you with so much information <laughs> or I have bored you with stuff, etc. I have to tell you, I admire a class that meets at noon. Um, I, I, I vividly remember when I was a student, I took a class at noon. It was called geology. A room twice as big. And uh, needless to say, my grades in geology were really, really, really bad. <laughs> but when you don't buy the textbook, it tells you something. Yes? Because you're going to be adapting 
to new groups, new people, new experiences all the time. The skills that you have work through a, those uh, times really become very important. You have a question. Yeah, what would you say your highest leadership quality is? Um, um, Anyone who has been in a relationship 
No, sir. They're not always eternally long. <laughs> Relationships don't always last forever and ever, despite what you might have said. At one time, in a tuxedo, somebody, you know. But uh, be, be firm enough about your belief <coughs> that you're willing to push it. And uh, knowing that some people will like it, some will not. And there will be a lot of people who are on the side. <coughs> you might know, to get some of those people on the side to come to your side of it. But Machiavelli said, you know, leaders uh, who are not, a leader who's not have critics, is not doing much. That's what Machiavelli said. <coughs> Anybody else? Does it make any sense? Yeah. <laughs>